People used to play polo with cars and it was as wildly dangerous as it sounds. There were so many injuries, doctors and nurses were part of the teams. Polo is frequently the go-to sport when it comes time to lampoon the cultural tastes of the aristocracy. While it might seem ridiculously posh to flog horses across a field bearing mallets, imagine how much cooler the entire enterprise would be if those old money mavens were hanging out the doors of Rolls-Royce Cullinans and Bentley Bentegas instead? This is the future that was nearly bequeathed to us through the brief popularity of auto polo. Picture the brutal violence of the ancient chariot races, only with each team charging at the other at near top speed in pursuit of a basketball-sized sphere, and you'll understand why the sport's glory days were limited to the earliest era of the automobile. In this contest of near-total madness that pitted teams of early motorists against each other in tight quarters, competitors were driven to the point of dismemberment, or death, to satisfy the bloodlust of audiences as eager for the accidents as they were to see any points scored. It's all fun and gore if that all sounds a little too dramatic to be true. A brief survey of the auto polo landscape at its pinnacle quickly confirms its brutality. Play to win, regardless of injury to the other fellow, is the slogan of auto polo, proclaimed an article in the Southeast Missourian from 1922, a full decade into a sport that combined the delicate ballet of a demolition derby with the terrifying prospect of being ejected and then run over, perhaps intentionally, by the other team. Owing to the very frequent need of a physician, the article continued, each set of players has a doctor and a nurse as a part of its outfit, both of whom are sometimes needed when a player has been seriously injured. The concept of organized auto polo can be traced back to a Topeka-based Ford dealer seeking to juice sales in 1911, but Ralph, Pappy, Hankinson's efforts merely formalized what had been going on in farmers' fields, abandoned armory buildings, and exhibition halls across the country since at least the turn of the century. The rules, such as they were, were simple. The pitch had to be at least 300 feet by 120 feet, the goals at each ended must measure 15 feet wide, and each team had to have at least a pair of cars in operation during play, with a referee studiously trying to stay alive in a vehicle of his own. 